Um, he's an actor. He's a fashion designer. Um, Elikem Kumoji joins me now, also known as Elikem the Tailor. Uh, good morning. Excess. She likes her sleep. Yeah, I think I should be sleeping <laughs> a lot more than I do. Thank you. Well, thank you for joining us. Obviously, we just saw um, that was the Glitz fashion show last right. year, and that was your show. And of course, she modelled in it. Yes. Let's 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 talk a bit about fashion. I know for a fact that you you have a degree in uh, entertainment. You know you did a performing arts at Legon. Yes, um, I went to the school of performing arts at the mm. University of Ghana, Legon, but I combined it with psychology as well. Bachelor of Science degree, yeah. Okay, but yeah, fashion designing was yeah, what most um, people, well, you know, most of us know you no, for. Yeah. So where did the fashion element come um, from? In between level three hundred and four hundred, I referred a year of school. And that's where the fashion came to me. It came to me very naturally. I would say it's God-given talent. I deferred um, one year to just, you know, chill at home. Chill, you nice. Know, pocket <laughs> wasn't too good. Okay. So, yeah, in between that time I was chilling, um, the fashion just came to me. I just wanted to make myself look different from others. And mm -hmm. in doing that, people recognized what I was wearing as something different. And they wanted to make same thing. So that's where it started from, little by little. Uh, right. And you were doing the, the, that, I guess, the casting phase when you're trying to get your face out there. Right. How hard was it for you? Um, acting is something I actually wanted to do. So I, I, I took a course in drama, theatre arts, in the University of Ghana. And uh, you know what they say, if you're trying to do entertainment or act, you need a day job. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> in trying to support myself and trying to make myself look all good and nice all the time, I, I got myself busy with the tailoring and fashion. And that's what was bringing in income, small, small. You know, Charlie, Ghana entertainment industry, you know, be small to break through. It's, you make a minor role. You know, I was called for a couple of music videos. I was in a, the African Man video. That's for 4 x 4 yes. Um, I did a couple of commercials to um, Standard Chartered Banks and whatnot and all that then. I got uh, one of my first movie roles in uh, Behind the Mask with Nadia Bwari. Uh, it was a Bandix production or so. And yeah, and so on and so forth. I did about five or six movies before going into the Big Brother Africa house. I designed for a couple of top Shatter celebrities in Ghana, <laughs> Shata. like yourself. <laughs> um, the Chris Atos and the uh, Black Boys and the George Quays and all that. Yeah, so it was, it was quite blooming before I went to Big Brother. Big Brother Africa just... It's just that platform that makes everything bigger and brighter, basically. Okay, so you obviously went in the house. Um, we all heard the story. Everybody was supporting you. Uh, you went, came up third, which was, you know, a, a really a wonderful achievement. Right. On the other side now, um, would, would you say that now you've made it? <laughs> um, when you came out, has the publicity of Big Brother taken you publicity did, did a lot for yeah. me. The publicity did a lot for me, and... I haven't made it. <laughs> There's still a lot of room for bigger and better things. Like, sky's not the limit for me. I'm trying to go, like, beyond into galaxy. <laughs> into the galaxy. So, you know, I haven't made it yet. There's still a lot more room for bigger and better things. Big Brother just um, put me on another pedestal. Just just gave me, like a, like, a... Just put me up on another level, mm -hmm. basically. But... There's more room for better things. Okay, so certainly, um, you know, we kn we know there's a relationship with yourself right. and Pokello, which developed, right. started inside the house, and obviously now it's blossomed into, right. uh, you know, what, what's the name they call you two? Polycam. It's po Polycam. <laughs> so, yes, the our, our celebrity couple. Um, <laughs> is there a way that, you know, how, and I, and I think, most people say, okay, well, you met in a reality TV show. Mm. Is there plans for you guys to do a reality, or are you working on a reality <coughs> angle where people can watch how your love develops in real life? Um, there's something cropping up, but mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not going to leak too much. I'm going to wait for it to be like a big surprise. I'm not going to say what exactly it is, mm -hmm. but yeah, Polycam is bringing out something big as a brand, you know, and... You know, the media has been trying to bash me here and there, saying me and Pokello is a publicity stunt. But all I can say to everybody is just wait and watch. I'm not trying to, you know, say too much here or run my mouth. Discussed and said, okay, maybe it's where we are that's making us feel this way. So let's get out and see how it gets. But eight, nine months down the line, feelings are even stronger and deeper than what it was in the house. So, yeah, I, I thank the Lord God Almighty Aww. for meeting Pokello. 
she's a wonderful woman. She she pushes me. But part of my, my drive now is, is because of her. And you know, like what they say, behind every successful man is a woman. It's true, man. Well, or she's in Ghana, or we're, we're meeting in Zambia for an appearance, mm-hmm. or we're in Namibia doing a fashion show. She's like my show stopper. Mm-hmm. If I have a fashion show somewhere, anywhere, I just bring it in and she, you know, she goes wild for me on the runway. So we're always together. Like recently I was in Zimbabwe. Before that, we're in Zambia together. We did Namibia together. We've done Nigeria. We've, we've been a lot of places. We're, we're never really apart. So it doesn't feel like a long distance thing. And plus right now, Thank God for technology. The the Bruni <laughs> helped us with the, all the Skype. Please, it's not WhatsApp. a Bruni. Please, all of these inventions are by black people too. Don't get it twisted. Yeah, that that one is by the <laughs> Bruni. The, the black ones we, we use it too. <laughs> Traffic lights is that we use every day is by a black person. Oh, is it? Yes. Wow. Get your black history. <laughs> Last month was I Black History Month. It. We need to. You see, we always think that. Yeah, the traffic light we all use, so let's not give too much. But but who 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 invented Skype? Black one or white man? Um, well, okay, Skype. I for advice, but it's definitely a white. Person. Okay, so thank the white man for Skype. For Skype only, but not, not just together. all technology <laughs> together. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's nice. Right. Okay. Well, culturally, is that like you know the Ghana culture and Zimbabwe culture? I don't know so much about Zimbabwe, right. but is there is there huge cultural differences or is pretty similar? Um, no, not really. I mean, we're all Africans. And Africa is Africa. Our culture and tradition is very, very similar and familiar with each other. So I don't say there's much of a difference. They've got their own kind of banku and, <laughs> and at plan they call sadza. Mm. And they eat the tau. What's tau? <laughs> you know that intestines in the goats? Oh, like um, shaki and... Yeah, they call it guru. Guru. Yeah, and you know... It's black African women and how they take care of the home and their husbands and you know now it's evolved to in, independent women going up and down to work. It's it's basically the same thing. You don't feel much of a difference when you're when you're there and when you're here. It's about the same thing. Okay. Now, obviously, I think I read recently that Zimbabwe press gave you a hard time recently. Um, what, what, what was the story? I I I just glanced on it. I think on Twitter. Yeah, it's not only Zimbabwe press. Every okay. Press, what every happened? Yeah. I, so, I don't know what I've done to people. Like, you're a celebrity. Ever now. since I came out of the Big Brother Africa uh-huh. house, it started from me and Pokelo being a publicity stunt to me being the father of some man's kids to me having an affair with some married woman to me saying did you have an affair with some married woman we come on I'm okay, plus you've you've known me for a while man do you think i'm that kind of person no no but the, if 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 the where do these stories come from i don't i have no idea like it's been one story after the other mm. you know what i'm saying and recently in zimbabwe i had an interview with this newspaper who asked me um why are you why will you choose a uh, a girl from zimbabwe rather than ghana oh. so in in a sense he's trying to say like what are Ghanaian girls? How are Ghanaian girls different from Zimbabwean girls? So I wanted to say, you know, same thing I'm saying now here that, you know, Africa's African cultures are different, but, you know, um, I, I'm i choosing a girl from Zimbabwe because, you know, Pokelo stands out for me mm-hmm. amongst all other girls. You know but is I'm it because she's from Zimbabwe or is just someone who just necessarily. Happen, happens? Yes, and I'm meet. saying that I'm in Zimbabwe. I'm trying, I'm yet to see how Zimbabwean girls are in terms of culture and tradition and all that. And, you know, but, you know, Ghanaian girls are ahead in, with fashion and, you know, they're on point, the way they dress and everything. I didn't even make a comparison. I only uh-huh. said Ghanaian girls are on point and Pokelo has stood up for me, so I'm yet to see what Zimbabwean girls are like. The guy turned it into a, a, a Zimbabwe versus Ghana issue, saying, Ellie Kim is saying Ghanaian girls are better than Zimbabwean girls. Oh, wow. And now this radio guy just went on to say, Ellie Kim said Zimbabwean girls are dirty and they don't bath and they don't know how to dress. Oh. Trust me, every, everyone in Pokelo's house went crazy in the, at, oh. that night in Zimbabwe. We had to go back to the radio station. We saw the boss. The boss was really upset. Because in trying to quote the newspapers, that wasn't even in the newspaper. It was first added of all, on. To say. Okay. Now the radio presenter was added on. on. So he had to you know, issue an apology and say this isn't what it was. And we went on the radio to correct everything. And like I'm saying, it's been one media bash after the other. Like I'm not trying to mention people's mm. names to hype them here. All mm. these um, bloggers who collect small, small money to write bad stories about you. Like, I've, I've gone way past that. You know what they say, what doesn't kill you only make you stronger. stronger. 